And you've been working on climate for how long? Well, we created this program 25 years ago, so we've right. been at it about that long. Right? I did my PhD on climate change in 1983. All right. So I've been working on it for almost 30 years, I guess. So uh, maybe you could go in order here. What, what do you think is the biggest misperception about global warming? Even among people who think it's a problem, what's the thing they're not getting about this? Well, the hardest thing, I think, for policy to understand is the incredible inertia in the system that makes it so hard to really change the climate outcome for 30 or 40 years, no matter what we do. That's one of the hardest things for people to understand, I think, and, uh, and one of the biggest challenges uh, to doing anything. Yeah, and that gets at this issue of, um, for if you're a politician, like the, even the Clean Air Act, you could sort of do something and have it have a palpable result. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you stop producing uh, aerosol pollution, it's gone in seven days. Right. If you stop, uh, if we if we stop if we reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the climate will continue to warm for decades. There's been this kind of portrayal of the climate problem as we know X, therefore we need to do Y. Is that well, I think, valid? Yeah, I think one of the challenges is that framed as uncertainty, there's a tendency for people to say, well, if we're very uncertain, then let's wait and see. But when you frame it as a risk problem that's happening, then you need to be prepared for those risks whatever they are, even though they, you don't know them very well. Mm -hmm. So it's really, so even though we can't predict what climate is going to do it with any precision, that doesn't mean we should stick our head in the sand, because we have to start thinking about what that range of outcomes can be. When we look at that, mm -hmm. unfortunately, what we really see is that the current range of climate variability might give you a distribution like this. Mm -hmm. If we take into account the uncertainties in climate and weather, your future looks more like that. So your tails widen on both sides, for example, with water stress right. or chance of drought or chance of flooding. Yeah, and, I, and, and one of the problems is it's so difficult to get people to think about the problem that way as, as a matter of, of decisions under uncertainty, although people do it all the time, right. deciding how to run their, whether let your, you're going to let your 16-year-old your, your kid drive the car or not, <laughs> right, right, right. buy insurance or not. Uh, you're making those decisions all the time, but one of the frustrating parts about this is the degree to which the, 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 the public discussion is, is cast in terms of whether or not climate is happening or not, or whether right. we're doing it or not. So the argument is, um, and I, I likened it to, to, the, to, the, to the, uh, the, the belief in the, in, in, in the virgin birth. I mean, it either, either it is or it isn't, and climate either right. is or it isn't. And once you're in that world, you're lost. Because because if with a noisy system with long term of, with long term consequences, it's very hard to get people to understand the issue. And, and 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 we haven't, I think, been very effective at somehow communicating it this way of thinking about the climate.